So we're in a tournament and things have been mixed up. Things have been uh, changed up. And uh, I feel like it's going to Vegas and the deck is stacked against us. But unless you play the game the right way and that perfect hand comes along and then you take the house. Mark, I think you and I have a chance to take down this house known as Bowman and Eanes. Sure, they're a good team. Sure, they know a thing or two. But you know what? We're Penske material. We know our stuff, man. We're coming in hot. We know our stuff. And we are going to put points on the board. And we have a really good shot at winning this thing because I know we have the right material for it because it's Penske material. Mark, what do you think about this match and our opponents? I think, Jay, you lost a ton of weight. That's incredible. But you look a lot like Ryan now. So good for you, I think. Uh, and you quoted Seinfeld, so I'm in. I don't know what we're doing here, but uh, I guess we're going to play trivia. We're going to play a team that uh, is is new. Um, but uh, but you're still Jay, right? So we'll, we'll have the same dynamic as we always have. This is going to be a match. Absolutely. Let's do it. Do you want to know the three rules in order to survive a team's match? Rule number one. Always confer with your opponent before saying final answer. If you don't, you're going to say the wrong answer. Rule number two, never use a full decade as a strength category. That's stupid. Rule number three, never say, I'll be right back. Because you won't be back. You'll be dead. This is true. Uh... Look, we got a pretty good draw, if I'm being completely honest for us. Uh, you know, Eanes is, probably, is a great player, uh, and pairing him with Boat and putting together the strengths uh, mesh really well. I'm excited about this pairing. Uh, I'm excited to see what you two are going to do in this tournament. Uh, you, got, you got anything you want to say, Thomas? Nope. Let's get crazy. Manners maketh man. Let's play. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Multiplex Entertainment Movie Warzone with a, another team's match from the first ever Movie Warzone mix-up teams tournament uh today we've got a great match between uh woodsboro's finest which i believe is caleb boatman and uh thomas eans uh and they are playing penske material made up of mark kameyer and ryan permison i don't really know what either of those are references to <laughs> but i assume they're clever uh with me on the desk is one Mr. Lucas Schildbach, who I assume was brought in during the ensuing panic before this match was supposed <laughs> to start filming. Lucas, how you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I had to uh, uh, Google the team names uh, references as well. So uh, we're clearly, uh, we clearly know a lot, which is why we are hosting and not actually answering the questions ourselves. So I think this will work out well. Yeah, uh, it has been pointed out to me in the chat that Woodsboro is a reference to the only horror franchise that I like. <laughs> so, whoops. Uh but with that, first wins and zero defeats, uh, we have Mark Kameyer and Ryan Permison, Penske's finest, or Penske material. <laughs> Jeez. Penske material. Talking about non Look, non Penske material. Am I am I right? I don't think that's something that I want to be. And introducing second, also with a record of zero wins and zero defeats, we have Woodsboro's finest, uh, Caleb Boatman and Thomas Eanes. It's been a long day already, folks. Uh, all right, so we are going to get into round number one. Round number one is going to work like this. We have eight different questions in eight different categories. Uh, when you hear the question, we're going to write your answer down on your whiteboard. There will be no conferring with your teammates. If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you do not get a point. Uh, at the end of the round, uh, if anyone has managed to answer all eight questions correctly, you will get a bonus question, also worth one point. Uh, reminded that you have three repeats and one challenge to use throughout the match. Any questions? All right. Uh, then with that, we will get to our first question, which is in the category of action. How many times has Matt Damon played the role of Jason Bourne? Uh, a That's a little question to start off. Always, you know, good to start it off with a nice, how many times has someone been in a franchise one? Yeah. Uh, how many times have I seen him in this franchise? Uh, that would be a big old zero. And wow. Five, four, three, two, one. I've never seen these movies. Uh, and we will start with Thomas. Four. And Boat. You should get some rest, Pam. You look tired. Four. Lucas, just go to the other two. All right, Ryan, let's see what you got. Yeah, it's four. 
four. All four right, four. And Mark. All right, we go four for four. And we continue on to question two in the category of comedy. What is the name of Achu's father in Robin Hood, Men in Tights? And five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's go to Mark first. I sneeze. All right. Let's go to Ryan. No, I said sneeze. I don't know if you can take it. Cannot. And uh, Thomas? Yeah, I'm not even sure. I'm not. Caleb? I also just said sneeze. All right. The correct answer is Osneys. So only Mark gets that one. And we go on Good to job, question man. three. I'm back. I, I want to stop existing right now. Uh, All right. Kim, would you uh, like to take question three? Sure. Can you just tell me what happened during that last question? Well, we just had a question and only Mark got it right. And only Mark got it right. All right. Cool. We'll, we'll count into this question. All right. All right. Question number three is going to come in the category of drama films. Which Sofia Coppola film takes place in Japan? Let's see, Cam. What is your thoughts on Japan as a country? Uh, my thoughts on Japan as a country are uh, infrequent. What about sushi? Do you like sushi? Sushi is kind of like the major Japanese thing. Yeah, I'm, not, not, I'm not a huge fan. Five. <laughs> I'm a big fan, so shout out to the Japanese and their wonderful food. Shout out to Pokemon. One, pens down, uh, and we will go to Ryan. Beguiled. Uh, and Mark. Cam hates Japan, everybody. Lost in translation. I don't hate Japan, I just don't think about it. Boat. <laughs> Lost in translation. And Thomas. Lost in translation. All right, so everybody but Ryan gets it. Good job, partner. On to question four in the category of the 1970s. At the start of Capricorn 1, three astronauts were supposed to launch into space on the first mission to which planet? So basically, name a planet. Yeah. Uh, and no, we will not accept Captain Planet. Uh, Does not work. Four. It would be weird if we send a spaceship just for him. Three, two, yeah. one. Pens down. Uh, we will start with Mark. Which one of you said Pluto? Because that didn't count. Uh, I said Mars. Uh, and we will go to Thomas. I said Mars. And Boatman. I also said Mars. And Ryan. I also said Mars. Well, you all that. said the correct thing. Nice. You did. <laughs> all right and we continue on to question five in the category of sci-fi fantasy in which sci-fi film will you find the voight comp test you broke up a little bit there just you, you say that again right. oh technical repeat absolutely yeah in the category of sci-fi fantasy in which sci-fi film will you find the Voight Kampf test? Hmm. I'm sorry, who used that repeat? That was a, a technical repeat um, on, okay. on me. Cool. My internet and Five, everything else doesn't want me to Four, three, two, one. Uh, let's start with Caleb. Blade Runner. Ryan. Fifth Element. Thomas. I said Blade Runner. Mark. Blade Runner. All right. Blade Runner is correct. Good job, buddy. And, and we're going to go to the sixth. Yeah, why don't you take the sixth question? Yeah. Go I'm, right ahead. I've missed, I've missed half the questions already. Uh, your next question comes in the category of movie quotes. What film opens with the quote... We were somewhere around Barstow on the edge of the desert when the drugs began to take hold. Uh, that just that just sounds like my Friday night. 
Am I you right? take drugs in the desert? Is that what you're saying? Oh, the famous the famous Canadian deserts are full of drugs, <laughs> and everyone knows I'm the what kind is, of cool guy. What is a Canadian? For... What does a Canadian cactus look like? To uh, like a moose, but spikier. One pens down, uh, and we will go to Boatman. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas. And Ryan. Easy Rider. And Thomas. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas. And Mark. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas. That is correct. All right. And we get to, I believe, what everyone likes to refer to as the penultimate question. And we go to the category of animated. In Kung Fu Panda. What kind of animals are the guards of the high security prison? And for everyone in the audience just paying attention, the score is currently 10 to 8 with Thomas and Caleb in the lead. Uh, Kung Fu Panda, of course, is a spinoff of The Karate Kid, I believe. I mean, it is basically it, it a spinoff. It takes place between Karate, Karate Kid and Cobra Kai, right? Five. I think four, so. Three. Two. One pens down, and we will start with Mark. Snakes? And Thomas. I said rhinos. And Ryan. I said gorillas. And Boatman. Rhinos. Rhinos and, is correct. And uh, Thomas and Caleb are extending their league lead to four points. That they are. And gentlemen, your final question in round one, as there are no perfect rounds, comes in the category of mystery thriller. In the film, play Misty for me. What is the name of the song an obsessive fan repeatedly requests? What kind of, what song would you repeatedly request if this um, was you? I would repeatedly request... What's a what's a song that would also be a funny joke, but that I also feel comfortable making? Um, I mean, Caleb Coho exists, so it's definitely a Hamilton song. Oh yeah, a fork song. Uh, <laughs> five shoot for teams available on Spotify. Three, <laughs> two, one pens down, and we'll start with Boatman, Misty, and Ryan. Never heard of this movie. I didn't even think the answer would be that simple. I said, turn the page. And Thomas, Misty. Boom. And Mark. You're all wrong. It's the American classic. Free Bird! Uh, Misty is correct. It's, it's called Play Misty for Me. He asks him to play Misty for us. It, it is as literally as simple as the title makes it out to be. If and so we end... question, you can email Caleb Cup. Uh, and we end sure. round one with a 14 to 8 lead for the two please. of Thomas and Caleb. Hello, everybody. There was Emergency in Canada. Uh, uh, Holtzman had to put on his cape and go play superhero. I don't know what goes on up there. It's weird, uh, but I'm here now hosting round two, uh, and with a score of 14 to 8, it's the wheel round. You know how this works. Uh, it, somebody's going to spin a wheel. They like it, they keep it. If not, they spin again, and they keep that one. Uh, they will get five questions, uh, two points apiece, multiple choice. Takes down the one point. We do have stealing. And uh, since the team of Boatman and Thomas are in first place, do you guys have a manager here? Yes, we do. Bring Coho. Okay, let's bring in our manager. Hi. All right. Uh, we'll go second, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Going second. Uh, so, Ryan and Mark, this is your spin. What do you think, Invisible Manager? What should we, what should we stick with? <laughs> All right, they got comic book movies. So, uh, their first spin. Comic book movies, guys. You want to stay with that, or do you want to spin again? I mean, Kirk's in the room. Kirk, what do you think? Should we spin again? Should we spin? <laughs> uh, Ryan, I'm inclined to uh, to stick with this, unless you're just not feeling it. Yeah, no, we can go for it. Let's do it. All right, we'll stick with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Lucas, do you want to give them their questions in comic book movies? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right, gentlemen, you are down six. Let's see if you can make up some ground. First question in comic book movies. What ability does Cassandra Anderson have in Dread? Do you know, Ryan? Because I do. I have like an idea of it. I'm not sure how, like, what exactly you call it. But if you know it, go for it. All right. 
Well, she's a mutant, but she is a psychic. Final answer. That is correct for two points. All right. I wasn't sure how they were going to, you know, how technical or specific they wanted to be. So I hear you. I hear you. All right. We go on to question two in the category of comic book movies. In 2015's Fantastic Four, what is the first thing Reed Richards teleports to a different dimension? I think the less said about this movie, the better. Um, do you do you have an idea, or do you want to go multiple? I haven't seen Fan Four Stick. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't want to take a wrong guess, so multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are A. Model airplane, B. Monkey, C. Toy car, or D. A basketball. <laughs> There's one answer I just want to say, just for last, but it's not the answer. Um. I think it's uh I think it's options it's either C or D I'm leaning towards. What do you is it, well you've never seen I was it. thinking I was thinking airplane or car, but either one. Yeah, uh just because of the significance later, I'm gonna go with uh car final answer. That is correct for one point. Good job, man. And we're gonna get going with question three in the category of comic book movies. Who plays Peter's father Richard? In the Amazing Spider-Man series, Peter's father, Richard. Oh man! Oh, 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 oh. Okay. All right, all right. I'll know it when I hear it on multiple choice. That is. I mean, a, I mean, do you? I mean, let's. You know, do you have a clue or? You know. No, I can see his face. Uh, so yeah, multiple choice, please. All right. All right multiple your choice, multiple choice. It. Your multiple choice options are: A. Billy Crudup. B. Dylan McDermott. C. Campbell Scott. D. Eric Stoltz. It's it's C. Campbell Scott. Final answer. That is correct for a point. Good job. Yeah. C. S. He was on that TV series Royal Pains with Mark Forstein. We get to question four, or your penultimate question in the category of comic book movies. In Wonder Woman, after Doctor Poison gasses a group of men at a meeting, what does General Ludendorff throw into the chamber? He throws in a gas mask. Final answer. That is correct for two points. Yeah. And your final question in the category of comic book movies to take the lead in Logan. What animal does Charles compare Laura to? Holy shit. She's very much like you. Hmm. Five. Want to go multiple choice? Four. Yeah. Um, yeah. Multiple two. choice. Multiple yeah. choice. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, a lioness, B, a hawk, C, an eagle, or D, a bobcat. Okay. I, I the, the question threw me off, and I was trying to remember the, the line. So I think it's lioness, but I can. Yeah. Remember. What do you think? No, that's, that's what I was thinking. Lioness. Okay. Lioness. Final answer. That is correct for one point, and you guys now have a one-point lead going into your opponent's spin. Good job, buddy. Yeah, you too. All, All right. right. Team of Boatman and Thomas. I got here late. I don't even know if you guys have a team name. This we is are your first uh, spin. Woodboro's Finest. There you go. Keep that. Pre Make it. Let's keep right. that. Pre-1970 yeah. Disney animation. What are the odds? Oh, you guys got your strengths too. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, we did. Mm. All right. Okay, question number one in pre-1970s Disney animation. In Sleeping Beauty, what is the name of the sword the fairies give to Prince Philip? I'll go multiple choice on that one, Thomas. Go for it. All multiple. right, multiple choice. Uh, is it A, the Sword of Valor? B, the sword of virtue, C, the sword of truth, or D, the sword of honor. Oh, okay. They're asking, like, what attribute it has. It's not really me, but okay. Can we get a repeat of the options? Sure. Your repeat is A, sword of valor, B, sword of virtue, C, sword of truth, or D, sword of honor. I'm going to go sword of truth. I mean, it would be fitting, but. Yeah. Sword of truth, final answer. That is correct for one point. 
All right, your second question. In the three Caballeros, what is the first present that Donald gets for his birthday? It's a movie camera. Or, sure. Yeah, we know it's not a camera, it's a projector. Five, it's a film projector. Four. Okay. Three, film projector, final answer. Two. That is correct for one point. Oh, two points. Oh, two points. Yeah, I'm sorry you didn't go. Uh, yeah, two points. Uh, question number three. Which Disney film featured the characters Jock, Trusty, and Tony? That's Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp, final answer. That is correct for two points. Question number four. Which flower sounds their A to start all the golden afternoon in Alice in Wonderland? I need multiple choice on this one. I didn't even hear the first part of that question. Do you want a technical repeat? Technical repeat, first part. Or, yeah. Which flower sounds their A to start all in the golden afternoon in Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, I need a multiple because I don't remember specifically. Okay, multiple choice. A, white rose, B, lily, C, red rose, or D, snapdragon? I, th I think it's lily. Yeah, let's lean lily then. Lily, final answer. That is correct for one point. And your final question. Which Disney villain was described as a vampire bat and an inhuman beast? Five, four, three, repeat the question. two. Okay, your first repeat. Which Disney villain was described as a vampire bat and an inhuman beast? I think I need multiple choice on those. All right. Go ahead. Multiple choice. Okay, is it A, Cruella de Vil, B, Maleficent, C, Queen of Hearts, or D, the Evil Queen? It's Cruella de Vil. That is correct. For Final one. answer. Final answer. All right. So after round two, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe we have a score of 21 to 15. Is that, that what you is have? Also, that is what I have. All right. We are going to go into round number three. This is the pick your poison round. We all give our uh, players the option to pick their one, two, three, four point questions uh, in the following categories. Christopher Nolan, 90s, comic book movies, crime, thrillers, westerns, and I'm sorry, you know what? I was in the wrong list of categories. Nolan, action adventure, sports, drama, horror, movie quotes, romance, rom-coms, and the 1980s. We're going to give the guys a chance to uh, pick their categories now, and we will be right back. Okay, welcome ever back, everybody. Our teams have picked their categories. Uh, Boatman and Thomas have taken horror at one, drama at two, Christopher Nolan at three, and action at four. Ryan and Mark have taken quotes at one, horror at two, action at three, and 80s at four. Uh, because they are behind, they're they uh, Boatman and Thomas have a six point lead. Uh, they are uh, Ryan and Mark are going to go first, and we're going to start with Ryan in the category of quotes. Ryan, you ready for your quote question? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, you'll find the quote I am serious and don't call me Shirley in what comedy? Airplane. Final answer that, that is correct for one point. Way to go. Yeah, all right, moving on to Mark. And two points for horror. Mark, mm -hmm. in which horror film will you hear the quote, they're here? <laughs> Poltergeist. Final answer. That is correct for two points. Yes. There you go. Okay. Your three-point question, which will, at this point, I believe, give you the lead. Or no, we'll tie you tie, for lead. Tie, 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 tie you for lead. Uh, you can confer on this, your three-point question, in the category of action. Who plays the psychopathic Dr. Edwin in 2010's Predators? Oh, isn't that, isn't that uh, old Larry Fishburne? Isn't he like the crazy one in Predators? He is the crazy one in Predators, yeah. He is, Lawrence Fishburne is, yeah. So, okay, you, are you good with that? Five, four, three, yeah, yeah, go for it. Lawrence Fishburne, final answer. That is incorrect. Oh. Uh, the actor we're looking for this character is Topher Grace. 
Oh shit! Wait, did you say the Predator or Predators? Is, is Predators, two thousand tens Predators. I forgot you were in that. My bad. <laughs> shit. There you go. Shit. That's, uh, Okay, guys, uh, this is your, your four-point question uh, to take the lead and send it back over to Boatman and Tana Thomas. Uh, category of 80s for four points. A cover of which Oscar-winning song plays over the opening... I'm sorry, let's start over. A cover of which Oscar-winning song plays over the opening credits of Heather's? Okay. Ooh. I watched this not that long ago. Five. Four. Repeat. Three. Please. Okay, your first repeat. A cover of which Oscar winning song plays over the opening credits of Heather's? The only thing that comes to mind is like crazy for feeling, but I know that's wrong. Yeah, I don't think it's like that she's one. She's crazy, crazy for feeling. I just no. <laughs> Five, um, four, three. Repeat the question. Two, second repeat. A cover of which Oscar-winning song plays over the opening credits of Heather's? <laughs> I keep I can't get uh, that the Cindy Lauper song out of my head, and I guarantee you that's not the one. Um, it's a cover of an okay. So five. Four, three, uh, two, repeat. One final repeat. A cover of which Oscar winning song plays over the opening credits of Heather's? Do you have an idea of an Oscar winning song that's classic? No, uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head because all, all the songs <laughs> I'm thinking of are post 80s. So I'm not all oh, right. God. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. You cool with that? Five, yeah, swing for the Hail Mary. Uh, three somewhere over the rainbow two. Final answer. and your winners <laughs> by way of technical knockout oh, yeah. woods Burroughs finest i'm sorry guys I'm <laughs> that not is correct to be here today <laughs> uh the correct answer is k sarah sarah uh so oh. we'll go now to uh post-match interviews uh let's start out with our second place finishers uh ryan and mark let's bring them in here uh, Lucas, you were here for the whole match, so you know what happened. Why don't you uh, conduct the interview? Yeah, so absolutely. So um, how did you guys feel the first time playing in a, a format like this? Obviously, it didn't go your way. Mix-up is kind of tough because you get it thrown in there with a partner, and you kind of have to just go with it. How do you feel like this first um, time worked out for you? Well, I just think that uh, – uh... We stumbled on uh, round one for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's and they had like a really fantastic uh, round one. Um, so it's that's kind of the I dare I say I know round two always is considered the make or break round for a lot of especially in teams. But I, I would yeah. dare say sometimes round one can be your your make or break. And they just kind of they were more in sync than we were. And um I want to I want to be petty and say that our uh round 2 questions were harder than theirs but I don't think that's true <laughs> at all. After I heard <laughs> after I heard their questions I'm like yeah, yeah no I'm not going to go there so kudos. Um it's just we got questions from movies that are more or less universally terrible but <laughs> it's a broad category comic book movies and we chose it. So you can't, you can't be too mad at it. So, you know, it, Hey, sometimes this is what happens in teams. You know, not every team is perfect um, despite what they may try to tell you. And this is uh usually Ryan and I are fighting against one another. So we've never <laughs> yeah. come together as a team. So yeah, it was, it was a different sort of mood and atmosphere, a different challenge. So, but you know, having said that, I don't think we did terribly despite, um, you know, the technical knockout i think we did okay no 18 points is not a bad game you guys really did get hamstrung by that first round being down six and then you guys basically at the same level round two the biggest problem is if you get down six and run one you need a huge advantage in round two and you guys just didn't get the category yeah. to get it or didn't get the weakness for them to get hurt as well um yeah it's a it's tough getting the technical knockout when you score 18 points because it's a pretty it's a pretty good showing, but um, yeah, I think you guys played pretty well today. You just kind of, that first round, if you don't start fast, sometimes you just can't catch up. Mm -hmm. So what I'll, we're asking everybody this after their, um, you know, their exit from the tournament. You guys are both part of established teams already. Uh, <laughs> any chance of this team uh, moving forward in the future together? Ryan, I mean, you. I mean look, I, you know, kind of going with what Mark was saying, I 
for me, I feel like I was the weakest link of this team because round one just kicked my ass. In more ways than one, Johnny Boy, it kicked my ass. And then those comic book movie questions, some of those were no joke. And then round three, I knew Topher Grace was a shrink slash doctor in Predators. I, I should have thought that. I'm going to be kicking myself for the longest effing time, considering the fact that I just rewatched that entire trilogy because I didn't hear about there were four. There were, I don't think a fourth one was ever made. Um, <laughs> watched the trilogy a few months ago, and I could, I easily could have pulled that out of my you-know-what, but no. As far as moving forward, uh, if Mark wants to team up on, on another day when I'm definitely at my best, because today I was just not. I suck, and I'm terrible, so bad. But uh, if, if we come back and do this again, uh, I'm up for it. If Mark wants to do it, great. If not, we can stick with our already established teams because I know Mark has a brotherhood with his bromance going on. I have a bromance with my partner going on. So, you know, <laughs> those things are pretty good, but we'll see how it goes. But, yeah, today was really rough for me. It was rough in so many ways, and, it, and I feel bad because I wanted to do my best for Mark. But, you know, we may be out, but, you know, in multiplex teams, hopefully the Ryehards and, you know, Mark's team of him and uh, was it you and Jay, you know, we'll be back. Yeah. All yeah, right. Think, well, good, Luke. I'm sorry. This, this, this definitely. I think these guys. Um, this is one of those team ups that I think even we knew coming to coming in that unless they had a really good run, they had established partners, they sure. had good relationships with them. This was not one of those teams that you look at, you go, oh, that may last a long time, even if they don't uh, like perform. You know, they have their they have their team partners, and I think you can tell in their yeah. answers there's a hesitance to just ditch their team partners out of hand, which you know yeah. we should all apply because loyalty is a good thing. <laughs> all right well thanks guys and um whether it's thanks. together or singles or with your other teammates um we'll see you again soon and uh, better luck next time definitely yeah. absolutely thanks, guys. Uh, let's bring in our winners uh thomas and uh caleb boatman all right guys first mix ma uh, first match and mix up went pretty well for you um yeah. how you feeling after that big win um, I'll go ahead and say I think Eans was fucking awesome today uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, Eans was perfect for both. I could see both getting a little flustered. Eans called those repeats. Uh, I've never seen anyone more chill under pressure. Uh, when Boat needed it. So I really, I appreciated that Thomas played great. Uh, you two play off each other really well. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, we came out here, we played a solid round one game. Uh, we did what we had to do and uh, we got that win. A TKO is a TKO is a win is a win. So uh, it feels pretty good. What do you guys think? Yeah. Some of those questions were kind of like foreign language to me. So it was like, it's all on you boat. Um, but other than that, I'm kind of pissed about the, uh, Robin Hood men in tights question. That was, a. Uh, it should have been a give me, but I think we played great. Uh, looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm super excited. Uh, Kirk asked in the chat. I actually know the thing. Uh, Kirk, we either play you and Jim or Brian and Adelaide Spence next. All right. Well, how do you guys feel about that? I think the real uh, question is, how do you feel about getting Jim Green? <laughs> Honestly, you know what? You I know think what? we can kind of tell. Those are two teams with one person who maybe did not want to team with the other person. Let's be 100% honest. One of these partners didn't know that their partner was a person until they got mixed up together. <laughs> <laughs> who is Kirk? <laughs> yeah, literally a thing that was said 30 minutes before the draft, right before the spin. Um, but we'll, we'll play both of them. Like, honestly, I think both of those teams are going to be fun for us either way, uh, because e whether we're playing you or Brian, both of you guys have proven yourselves time and time again as some of the best. And uh, Spence and Jim have both proven themselves as being hungry. Both have gotten their wins this season. They've put in the work. So uh, both we, we won't sleep on either team, uh, but, you know, we'll be happy to play either one. All right. Well, hopefully I'll be seeing you guys soon. All right. And uh, we're going to wrap it up. We'll go back to the desk here with uh, Lucas. All right, Lucas, um, again, you were here the whole time. I didn't see round one. It sounded exciting. Uh, yeah. What were your th overall thoughts on the match? I think that you just saw um, Boatman and Thomas were just really in sync with each other. They had they got the same seven right in round one. They missed the same question. They just were really consistent. When you build a six-point lead in round one, and then you go into round two and the teams get the same amount of points, it's really hard to catch up at that point. Like If you are down six after one, you need a huge round two. And, um, you know, Ryan and Mark just never got it. It was, it was just yeah. that lead from round one just carried over. And it was kind of like the story of the entire match was if you're up six after 1-1, one, one, it's kind of hard to lose that match. And I think Coho made a pretty good point where, um, you know, Thomas knew to let Boatman take control of the questions 
in, in round number two. That was that's definitely Boatman's strength. And uh, Thomas just did the housekeeping. He did a good job of it. So when you have a team, especially in something like this, a mix-up where you're just thrown together, and teams know their rules and know what to do when, uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty dangerous. And you know that'll only continue to uh, they'll continue to jail like that. Um, so it's going to be tough for whoever they do play in round two. So uh, we're going to get out of here now. Uh, for uh, Ryan, for Mark, Boatman, Thomas, uh, Coho, and Lucas, I'm Kirk. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye bye.